In this final episode of my Sansui AU9900 repair and restoration, I'll reassemble the unit and then take it to the test bench and take it to the max and let's see what she'll do. This is, uh, she's wide open here. <laughs> There's no way. If you're doing 80 watts continuous, your speakers are blown. If you enjoy vintage audio equipment and you've come to the right spot, please subscribe and hit that notification bell as well as giving me a big thumbs up if you like this video and share it with others. There is a risk of serious injury or death from electrical shock working on this equipment. If you're not comfortable with working on the equipment, please do not take the cover off and consult a professional. The first thing I want to do is to get the face plate back on the unit and get the knobs back on and move on from there. I've got the face plate just loosely sat on to the uh, chassis. What we want to do real quick is just power it up and make sure that uh, power protector LED is working. Remember we had to unhook that? Because uh, once you screw this guy back on, you put your knobs back on, what a pain in the hiney. Uh, you got to take it all back off. Okay, we're good to go. Now I'll put the five screws back in the uh, face plate and get the knobs put back on and then we can move on. I've reinstalled the face plate and the knobs. Uh, we're getting close here. Um, before I reinstall the bottom panel, there's a couple things I want to do. Uh, one is we haven't looked at the uh, filter capacitors uh, at all, and I'd like to do some measurements on those. Um, and also, uh, like to take a look at the uh, bias down here. Uh, I think it's an easier place to look at it um, down here in the bottom. I think we can get on those emitter resistors easier down here. So we're going to do some measurements on the filter capacitors which are right up along here and we're going to do a little bit of testing down here around the uh, power transistor uh, heat sink block. I have a Peak Atlas uh, capacitor tester. It's an ESR um, 70. That's the model. Uh, it's a it's an excellent little capacitor tester. Uh, hold it in your hand as you can see. Has two leads and uh, gives you a pretty good idea about any electrolytic capacitor and what kind of shape it's in. We're going to do a test here on all four capacitors. Um, I can't see them, which uh, bothers me a little bit because I've had capacitors test good filter capacitors and you look at the bottom of them and there's goop all over the place. But this at least gives us some idea of the uh, condition of these capacitors. I am going to replace all four no matter what they test, but I just wanted to show you um, how this little device works. It uh, works real well, it's real easy to use. And, but again, these filter capacitors are 45 years old. Now they're supposed to be uh, 6,800 microfarad capacitors. So let's see what the capacitor tester tells us we've got. Uh, 7,800. All right, so, I mean, on the surface, that seems all right. DSR for these filter capacitors, that seems, you know, in range too. But as I said, it doesn't matter if they test good or bad. Uh, I'm going to change them, but it's a good thing to know. I, I've got to have to order those, and um, I may be, de may be using this amplifier before I get to change them. And so it's a good idea, so you don't look in here and you've got something, um, you know, extremely wrong that you can't go on but uh, all of these look like they test out. Now I'm going to check the uh, bias current. Uh, it's called all kinds of things. You know I call it, I usually just say the bias. Um, the bias current. The idle current. Um, whatever it is, all AB class amplifiers like this one um, has a specification 
for its bias current. And we're going to check that now. So we're going to go ahead, I'm going to use two meters. I mean, this is always the best way of doing it if you can. You know, you've got two meters because we've got to hook up to the two channels here. Um, if you only have one meter, that's okay too. You just got to do one channel at a time. But I want to warn you, in this section of the amplifier, if you short something together, something bad is going to happen to that amplifier. Just is. I mean, uh, ask me how I know that. Um, you've got to be extremely careful in here. Any leads that you're hooking up down here, you know, on the power transistor uh, block, um, which we're going to be. We're going to be hooking onto those big white things there, which are called emitter resistors. Um, always, always, 100% of the time when you're hooking the leads up, turn the power off. Um, if you only have one multimeter, no problem, but you do one channel, you turn the unit off, then you move your leads. You know, get ridiculous and pound this in over and over, but it's very, very important that you be very careful with your test leads because we're going to have to take test leads and, and, and put them on these emitter resistors. Each channel, we're going to go across them here. We're going to have a couple leads up here, and then over on this other channel on the emitter resistors, we're going to... Um, put one lead, one on the NPN transistor, one on the PNP, and uh, we're going to measure um, the idle current. Actually, we're going to measure voltage, but we can do a little bit of math and figure out what that breaks, what we need to see when we read the voltage across these two emitter resistors, what that breaks down to in current, which is usually what you're going to see in a service manual. They're going to tell you that you're supposed to have a certain amount of current um, that biases these transistors. But anyway, I, I mean, I just wanted to show you that, share it with you. I'm going to use two meters, but if you don't have two, that's all right, too. You just got to be careful. I'm going to use these little grabbers. You know, these little grab leads, they open up. You can kind of see, I hope, maybe, maybe not. Uh, as I push this down, like a plunger, these little two pins come out. And when you release it, they grab. And so you can see it's all insulated. Um, if something does happen here, it falls off, you've got a lot better chance that it's not going to short something out, out on you. I've got the two leads on. You can see maybe it's hooked here to the emitter resistor of one of the NPNs and then we've got the other one hooked to the PNP transistor. Again, the emitter. You gotta be, again, very careful. I showed you the leads I was using. Um, you've gotta just be very careful in here uh, that these are on there solid. Um, and they don't slip off. I'm testing this first uh, before I even think about doing any adjustments. Um, from experience I can tell you when you start adjusting the pots, there's a pot for the left channel and the right channel um, for the uh, bias current and you will never ever get these perfect and that's one thing I think people have to overcome that look if you're about where you should be um, you start moving that pot and now you gotta wait uh, who knows how long so ten minutes later we've moved up about a millivolt uh, this is how this is see if you would have just powered it up and um, said well I guess that's uh, what my bias current is You've just got to give these amplifiers a little bit of time, most of the time, because how are you going to use this piece of equipment? You're going to just turn it on and for three minutes and turn it off? No. You're probably going to turn it on, have it on for a few hours. So you need to let it just sit here for a little bit to see where it's going to stabilize at. I let the uh, AU9900 uh, sit up on the bench for about an hour and a half. And um, 
the bias looks uh, very good so we'll move on from here now I've moved the AU 9900 on its other side because now we can test the uh, DC offset um, the way we do this is I'm going to ha I have my two meters out here and I'm going to just uh, put the probes right into the speaker outputs and uh, we'll see what we get I've got the meter probes into the left and right speaker outputs okay the one channel is about five millivolts the other channel is very close to uh, zero you know we want it as close to zero as possible we'll let it warm up here a minute um, again if you've got a DC offset that's this low don't mess with it <laughs> just don't mess with it I mean uh, two or three millivolts is uh, just great. Uh, you just don't want to even you don't even mess with it. So um, that's great. That's great. We don't have to get in there and do any adjusting at all. It's time to take one final look um, inside the bottom of the chassis. We're going to go ahead and uh, put the bottom back on. It's been a while since we were able to do that, but we make every make sure everything's run, all the wires are back in the channels, and just give it a quick eyeball to make everything, make sure everything uh, looks okay. It's time to get the two top panels on. Um, same thing. Just take a quick look. Make sure everything uh, looks neat. I've got the top two covers on. Okay, I've got everything hooked up. Uh, the AU 9900 is hooked up to my sound technology ST3200 uh, analyzer and along with um, my signal generator. And, at least, last but not least, my 300 watt 8 ohm load resistors. Um, the sound technology 3200A was state-of-the-art uh, back in the 1980s. So this was a piece of equipment that uh, was used on a test bench with a unit like the uh, Sansui. So um, it does a real good job. Let's just... Uh... Oh, and by the way, I've got the signal generator. Um, it's running into the aux uh, auxiliary of the uh, Sansui. So let's uh, just see, first of all, how well the two channels track together. Right now I've got the volume knob all the way down here. Um, right now you don't hear uh, anything. When I start to turn the volume knob on the 9900, you're going to hear the 1000 hertz tone that I have right now coming from the signal generator. And there's a little speaker in this guy. Um, it's enough to hear it. Um, and let's just see how well the two, tra what this test does is just see how well the two channels will track. This here will be the left channel, this here will be the right channel. And like I said, I've got these hooked. These are coming from the speakers, speaker outputs on the AU9900 and over to the load resistors. So it's simulating a load on the amplifier that it would have with speakers. Um, so let's, uh, let's just give it a shot. So I'm gonna start turning here. I'll leave it, uh, I'll leave the camera here on the uh, 3200A, but I'm gonna start now turning the uh, volume. I'm still turning, just turning very slowly. Now we've got to two tenths you know, about a, 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 of a watt. And uh, they're tracking very close, you know, 0 0.267, 0 0.255. Uh, and here I go, I'm gonna crank it a little bit more. And I'm gonna get a little more aggressive here. And as you can see, we're up to over six watts right now. The, the amp's just running continuous into the eight ohm load. Um, We've got 6.7 watts uh, from the left channel, 6.57 from the uh, right, and that's very close. You're not going to hear that, the difference uh, between the channels there. That's, that's very close together. So let's move it up a little more even. 
Now we're at 16.7 on both channels. So that just shows the volume control is working very well. The amp is producing uh, about the same power out of each channel, which tells you a lot. What I'm going to do now is just walk away from the amplifier for a while. It's uh, the left channel is producing 33 and a half uh, watts per channel and 8 ohms. The other uh, right channel is 33.3, which again, the amp's tracking very good. So uh, between the two channels, and that's what you'd like to see. So that, that's, that gives me a good feeling that the uh, preamp and the amp uh, sections are working together well. So we're going to let it sit here, and we're going to let it burn in, literally. <laughs> um, she, we'll see how warm she gets. I'm going to leave her here uh, for well, probably an hour or so, and let her just sit here and uh, warm up, and then we'll do some more testing. Okay, now we're going to do some distortion tests. Now I'm going to push another button. Right now you're looking at here, the left channel, here the right channel, and it's just power output. But now we're going to go to distortion. And um, I'm going to pick the distortion parameter. I'm going to go ahead here and just turn up the juice here a little bit. And again, over here is going to be the power level. You can see the distortion went down a little bit as we approached one watt. We're like at 0.7. Not a lot different, but different. And that's and that's normal in, in these uh, vintage amplifiers. Um, and not just vintage amplifiers, amp amplifiers in general. Um, a lot of times, as I said, at the lower power levels, um, their distortion will be a little higher. Um, not considerably, and this one's, you know, is really is, is doing great. So let me just keep cranking here. And now over here, you can see I'm at almost two, two watts. And again, we're staying, you know, that 0.04 level for distortion. So I'm, I'm going to move it up here a little bit here. I'm going to get a little bit aggressive. And uh, I just went to 20, almost 27 watts a channel. Let's go above that, just say we did, right? 42. 66, continuous, 0.05. Just under its rated power, this is about 75 watts uh, continuous at 0.06. As far as the distortion goes, there's 78. And now see, she's just... She's just over 80, 80.5, and there she is at 0 0.06. So, I mean, the left channel is, you know, easily is beating its spec. And this is really putting some, some uh, pressure on the amp. You know, I mean, we're running full bore here. Uh, this shows you again, this is the, um, this is the uh, left channel. And let's go ahead and try that with the right and see how that works out. Okay, we're gonna run it up here. We're at 61. This, again, this is on the uh, right channel. We're about 0.05. Uh, we just went over, yep, yeah, there she is. I mean, she's at uh, just, see if we get up about 82, the distortion goes to about 0.1. But right here at its rated, um, you know, 80 watts a channel. I mean, look at that, 0.06. I mean, solid as can be. And I mean, I mean this is, uh, again, this is, uh, she's wide open here. <laughs> There's no way, if you're doing 80 watts continuous, your speakers are blown, right? So uh, there she is. I just moved it up a hair more to 81. Uh, you can tell there she's going to start to go over the tip over here, but uh, that's pretty. Uh, that's pretty darn impressive for a 45-year-old piece of electronics, right? I mean, it's like she just came out of the box, you know. And that's the thing I find uh, so appealing about this stuff, and I'm not scared to do this, 
You know, I mean, I'm not scared that, oh my God, I'm gonna blow it up. No, because we just went through it, just restored it, and uh, I, I wouldn't do this to it every day, obviously. I mean, I'm gonna hook it up and listen to music with it, but it's just nice to know that this, that this piece of equipment that's 45 years old can meet its specs like it was just taken out of the box, you know, in 1975. I hope you enjoyed the final chapter of my Sansui AU9900 Integrated Amplifier Repair and Restoration. If you didn't get the chance to see the first three parts, I've provided the links down below in the description. This Sansui AU9900 has come a long way over the last few days, and now I'm really excited to do what? Listen to it. I've listened to it a little bit on the test bench, uh, but you know, now it's time to really listen to it. And if you guys follow my videos, you know all of the equipment I work on is my equipment. I don't service it and then pack it up and send it out the door. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate a big thumbs up down below. And for you non-subscribers, uh, I'd really appreciate you considering subscribing if you'd like, like this video and would like to see more like it. And for you folks who are already subscribers, what can I say? Thank you so much for hanging in there with me, and I'm going to continue to try to make good videos for you. So, once again, thank you to everyone for watching, and now it's time for this Sansui AU9900 to make some music. I can't begin to tell you how good this AU9900 sounds. It is incredible. It has such a huge sound stage and every detail of the music can be heard. I just don't know how you could be disappointed in it. It really is an incredible sounding uh, integrated amplifier that deserves every bit of the praise it's ever gotten. It really is incredible.